folks, welcome back to another video. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. You mean more to me than you know. Uh, I love you guys. If you're not a subscriber and you find the content useful or enjoyable, please do consider hitting subscribe and like. It'll really help me, uh, encourage me to continue making content and grow this channel and uh, keep making videos on investing. So today what we're talking about is my top five stocks to buy right now. Of course, this is completely subjective. Every investor is different. Uh, they have different goals, uh, risk profile. Some people might be risk averse. Some people might be okay with a, a lower, safer return. Others uh, might be a little more risky uh, and really a uh, swing for the fences type thing. Also, it can fully depend on what you already have on your portfolio. If you already have a ton of a certain sector, you may not want to buy more uh, of these companies, or maybe you already own these companies, or um, or maybe this just doesn't fit in with your portfolio. So of course, uh, do your own research. This is just to give you some ideas and to take and go research further. I'm not saying you should just watch this video and then just jump in and buy every single one of them. But for me, these are the five stocks I've been adding more of lately and uh, I'm gonna tell you why I think they're a good buy right now. So number one is Tesla. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you had to know this one was coming. Uh, one of my favorite companies, it's made me a lot of money. My cost basis uh, as the shares stand right now, well, original cost basis, because I have added more, so I've actually averaged up, you might say, but I bought shares for $50 a share in today's value. Right now, they're around $700. They've gone up to around $1,200, so uh, clearly a very big return there. But I still believe that Tesla is a bargain today. It's dropped from you know twelve hundred down to about six sixty. Uh, that's due to a lot of different factors. Mainly, uh, the macro markets uh, are horrible right now, and Tesla gets lumped in with a lot of the growth stocks that have been the hardest hit. Even though they are turning a profit, they're making money. They're in no danger of going out of business or anything like that. And uh, while they've been dropping, they've still been continuing to execute, continuing to expand their manufacturing footprint, grow, uh, build new factories in Berlin and Austin, and expand their massive gigafactory in Shanghai, as well as uh, continue to operate their factory in Fremont as well. And they're scouting out locations for new factories as we speak. So uh, an extremely massive amount of growth going on right now for Tesla. They're guiding for 50% plus annual uh, vehicle manufacturing growth per year, uh, annual per year, um, which is insane. Not a lot of companies can grow by 50% per year. And they're price to earnings multiple, which had been very high and was a lot of the reason for the criticism some people give it. Uh, they felt that the price just got too high out of whack. It's been crushed. Um, they've continued to expand while going down. And now we've gone from a 300 price to earnings multiple to uh, under 70. I think it last I saw was actually in the 60s maybe at this point. So um, crushing that multiple down very, very fast. And once you reach a certain point for a company growing this fast, it just can't go any lower. Uh, I fully believe that the auto business alone can justify the current share price, which means they have so many other businesses that are just um, potential bonuses, like a call option inside the stock that if they are successful at, would be absolutely huge for investors. Of course, we have our full self-driving. Um, that's like a twelve to fifteen thousand dollar software option per vehicle right now, uh, and their self-driving software is improving rapidly. So, as they scale their vehicle production business, they plan to reach twenty million vehicles by twenty thirty or something like that. Some maybe twenty thirty five. Um, absolutely crazy numbers of vehicles. If you even do ten to twenty percent of your customers purchase this. $15,000 option, which is all software, doesn't cost you anything in terms of hardware because it's already in the car. It's extremely high margin that flows to the bottom line. There's a ton of money to be made there as this uh, software package improves. And that's not even to consider the possibility of them operating a robotaxi network, which would be even better margin and just 
absolutely be a money money printing machine as well they are expanding into insurance and uh, offering insurance for their vehicles at a at a good price they're able to take the data from the car to see how the people are driving and uh, change the price they offer you for insurance based on that so safer drivers will get a cheaper deal and uh, you know insurance companies are massive so tesla can take even a little bit a little slice of the car insurance market that's actually quite large uh in addition to insurance of course we have solar we have battery storage both uh residential in terms of their power walls and uh utility scale in terms of their power or mega packs um they have a big project which was extremely successful in australia for providing battery power to a grid to stabilize the grid or during peak hours um and there's really just like so many little businesses inside tesla that you don't even think about obviously their uh robot that they're looking at building um, could be a game changer for the entire economy, work in factories, a humanoid robot using AI based on their full self-driving. Um, don't want to get too in the weeds here, but although te- Tesla has been beaten down, uh, a lot of it to do with Elon Musk's interest in buying Twitter, um, his uh, public comments about politics, as well as just the macro markets, I think a lot of that is noise, and if we just look at the numbers here, there's a lot to like about Tesla, so that's my number one stock to buy, and uh, just to let you guys know, I have added my to my position pretty heavily over the past week or so. I think below 700 is just a great deal. Number two is Airbnb. Uh, I do love this company. If you can get into it around 100, I say yes, please. (laughs) Um, It's only been public about a year, but this is as cheap as it's ever been. Um, Originally went public, it was trading for around $140 a share, went all the way up to 200 or so. And now with the recent market pullback, we're down to 122. Uh, It's down in the oversold section of the uh, relative strength index. And I just think they're well positioned for the post COVID uh, travel boom where everyone, everyone's sick of staying at home. Everyone wants to travel, hop on a plane, go somewhere new, um, have a new experience. And uh, people who are working from home even can now work from anywhere. You can just book an Airbnb for another country for a month, work there during the days, explore the country during the nights. Uh, it's a great opportunity for for people who work from home. Um, Brian Chesky is a great CEO. He's a founder. I always love investing in companies where uh, the founder is still running the company and they have the great vision for the future. I just love this company. I think it's the biggest winner from the sharing economy. I worry that uber and lyft are the the two other big ones in the new sharing economy uh are subject to disruption by full self-driving whether it's tesla whether it's someone else we see the future it's going to happen eventually Um, it's just a matter of when so they're either going to have to pay someone fees to use full self-driving software or they'll just be um out competed by someone who makes full self-driving and uh, Airbnb really doesn't have that threat hanging over them. They've got Verbo, which is a competitor, and they've run uh, pretty impressive marketing campaigns, but Airbnb is still number one in the space, and they have the brand recognition and uh, executive team to execute. So I have been adding at these levels, and I plan to hold it for the next five years plus. All these companies, by the way, I plan to hold long-term for at least five years. These are not short-term trades. Uh, That's not generally what I go for, although I do dabble in some options plays uh, fairly regularly. Next one is NVIDIA. Uh, What can I say about it? It's a great company. You can just hold it for years and not worry. Uh, Growing extremely fast, their CEO, Jensen Wong, is extremely smart. He's grown the company uh, since he took over <laughs> massively, um, their chips and cards are in computers, consoles, uh, cars for full self-driving. They're in data centers, uh, AI. Uh, they'll be needed for the metaverse. It's just um, 
massive growth. They're really not going anywhere, and they've come down a lot in price. Um, I think now is a good time to get in. Number four, this is the riskiest company of the bunch. This is Rocket Lab. Um, and I will say that they're not making a profit right now. They're in growth and expansion mode. So they're still early on in the uh, life cycle of the company. If you're looking for a company that is profitable, that is safer, this is not the one for you. Um, that being said, though, I do really like them. I love their CEO. He's an extremely brilliant engineer. Um, not just a businessman, but he actually designs rockets himself and uh, does a pretty good job at it, kind of like Elon Musk um, with SpaceX, although <laughs> a little bit less controversial than Elon, perhaps. Um, so their Electron rocket uh, is now going reusable, which will have a massive impact on margins, on their launch cadence, on... Um, just making more money. So what they do is they bring the rocket back through the atmosphere. They deploy a parachute to slow it down. They catch it with a helicopter, which <laughs> looks super cool and absolutely bonkers, and bring it back into shore. They don't have to pay for a boat to go out there and land on. Helicopters are actually much cheaper than boats, and they're able to do this because their rocket is smaller, launching smaller satellites. They are also developing a new larger rocket, rocket which will be able to launch larger rocket uh, satellite constellations, and that one is also planned to be majority reusable, except for the small upper stage. Um, great technology, but they're also and they build satellites. They have um, they've made a, a, a several recent acquisitions in order to be able to. Uh, build more satellites for third-party companies. They've bought a solar panel company recently that puts panels on satellites. Um, so that business, although not quite as glamorous as the rocket business, actually made more money for them this past quarter than the launch business did. And they're really not known for it. So it's kind of like a hidden gem of uh, of. Uh, fast-growing, interesting part of the company that not a lot of people think about. Um, so uh, they provide software, they build your satellite, they'll launch your satellite, <laughs> they'll do everything for you. They said they want a Rocket Lab logo to be on everything that goes into space at some point. I don't know if they'll really get there, but um, they don't have to. SpaceX is the largest player in the industry. They're worth $100 billion. At these levels, Rocket Lab's probably worth like $2 billion. So, you know, you, even a bit of growth can get you a double. And um, high risk, but I like this company, and uh, I have added a bit more at these price levels. Number five on the list is another safer one. I tried to give you a range of stocks, although, of course, I, I am biased towards tech. That's my favorite industry. But I tried to give a range of safer stocks, uh, more speculative stocks. To, so whatever you're interested in adding to your portfolio, you can take an idea from this and go research it. Qualcomm's definitely on the safer side. Um, you could hold this in your portfolio for years and feel comfortable with it. Not worry about the company. Um, their chips are essential for phones tablets, mobile devices, they're not going anywhere. Um, now, as we can see from the charts, they've dropped from around $200 a share to all the way down to 131. So I think at these levels, it's a pretty good bargain. Um, on a three-year basis, their price to earnings ratio is pretty much the lowest it's ever been. So they've, even though their share price has dropped, they've continued to execute and grow their revenue. And uh, in terms of a price to earnings, they're extremely cheap right now. And I think we will eventually return to those historical averages of, you know, maybe a more like a 20 plus price to earnings as opposed to the 12 we're at right now, which would obviously mean great things for the stock price and shareholders. They also do pay a dividend. So if you're a dividend investor who wants something safe, then we'll pay you while you hold it. It's a pretty good option. Tech companies don't usually pay much of a dividend, but at these levels, we're getting over 2%, which is really not that bad for tech. So for this company, I think it's a safe play. You're not going to have to worry about them going out of business at any point. But at, this, but at the same time, they still have great potential for even, you know, a double. Like, if you want to buy a safe bank stock that pays you a 3 to 5% dividend, 
um, and it will be steady in your portfolio, you really aren't going to have much chance of getting a double over the next few years. It's just not really how the market works. But uh, if you buy a Qualcomm, it's pretty safe. It pays a dividend. It's gone from 200 to 131. Its price to earnings ratio is quite low. It's continuing to grow. Like I could see it hitting, uh, you know, 230, 250 in the next couple years. So you, you could potentially get a double on a fairly safe dividend stock. So that's number five for you. I have bought some of it fairly recently as well. So as I said, uh, these are stocks I've been buying. They may not fit your portfolio. They may not fit your risk profile as an investor or what you're trying to accomplish, what your goals are. But um, hopefully at least one of them you can take away as a decent idea to go and research, look into it yourself, decide if it's a company you'd like to own uh, at these levels. Um, if you found this video interesting, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It'll really help me to keep making videos. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.